Hello and welcome to another Daily Dose of Insights powered by Container Exchange. My name is Christian and every other day we bring to you the key news, stories and data points that move container markets and hence your business. Today it's Friday, so happy Friday first of all. And Friday always means Fundamentals Friday here at Exchange. We look at the longer term trends and news that shape the market for the months, quarters and years to come. Uh, let me quickly share my screen and to give you a little bit of background on what I'm talking about. Um, two core headlines here. Number one is the ongoing congestion at the Panama Canal. Uh, you've all read, heard about it, and we've also talked extensively about this over the past two or three weeks, that, um, that water scarcity in the Panama Canal leads to congestion because the Panama Canal Authority essentially restricts the number of vessels that are allowed to pass um, every given day. Um, and very interesting now there was an analysis coming out uh, looking at the difference between the impact on tramp vessels um, and bark carriers and oh, no. container ships and um, interesting here is that uh, on 20, uh, 30th of august 127 vessels were lying in waiting versus an average of 90 so um, roughly a 50% um, increase uh, versus the average um, number of vessels uh, waiting. And there are 50 with reservations, 77 without. And you might ask, okay, what's a reservation? Um, it essentially means that you can reserve a slot um, for transiting the Panama Canal. Uh, and that slot is quite expensive. Um, we've noted down here, so it's about $85,000 uh, um, for a Neo Panamax um, vessel um, with a beam of for more than 47, 42 point something meters. Um, and the interesting thing here is that um, on average, container vessels do reserve slots because container lines have fixed schedules to keep. Um, and that means that the average waiting time for container ships right now is only 4.7 hours versus the average all vessels of 9.7 days. Um, and this is all northbound, but southbound doesn't look much, much different. Um, so very, very interesting. I think there was a lot of um, hype, a lot of discussion around whether um, this uh, congestion at the Panama Canal would lead to um, sort of a reverse in the shift of cargo volume from um, the U.S. Uh, west Coast to the East Coast. So currently there's a shift from West to East, um, also exacerbated by the labor um, disputes on the West Coast. Um, but then there was the discussion that, okay, now that the Panama Canal is so congested, all that cargo, a lot of that cargo would move um, west again uh, to the west coast main ports and looking at these numbers that's really not to be expected the second big uh, topic for for discussion uh, is an article on Lloyd's that's called changing lanes is liner shipping heading towards overcapacity something that we've also talked about extensively over the past uh, months almost um, as the order book um, as a percentage of current fleet has swelled to about 30 percent so we'll probably see about a 30 percent influx of capacity into the uh, into the liner um, segment and container liner segment, and that translates, of course, to significant uh, additional capacity. However, that article uh, points out that um, actually, sort of nominal capacity is not the same as deployed capacity because liners have the option to um, redesign their networks, add additional port calls, add additional services, and also um, just slow steam, so drive slower with their vessels, uh, and that essentially just reduces the capacity again. And what that means is if you look at um, Q2 2023, so this year versus last year, um, the nominal, nominal capacity has grown by about 6%, but the added uh, effective capacity and the deployed capacity has only grown by about 3% because of these factors, because liners have been able to uh, actually reduce the impact of, of, that, of that influx of capacity. Um, now, the question, of course, is, how sustainable is that? Um, will liners be able to manage away that uh, additional capacity influx in such a way um, without significant scrapping, of course? Uh, scrapping, so um, deletion of vessels, uh, demolition of vessels, doesn't look like um, it's going to contribute a lot here. Um, also, uh, we've only seen about 50, 60,000 um, TUs of tonnage um, being, being scrapped uh, this year. Now, um, we maintain our position that um, there will be an additional uh, significant overcapacity in the at least quarters, uh, if not two or three years to come, um, which will keep rates low um, or uh, yeah, push some, some of the trade lanes into negative territory compared to operating costs, variable costs. Cool. That's it from me, from us for today and actually for this week. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in and have a fantastic weekend. Take care.